We are in this series that uh, Austin kicked off last week called The Endless Summer. How many of you have seen the movie Endless Summer? Okay, about half. All right, pretty cool movie. Um, it, 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 I guess more of a, of a documentary, but uh, it was uh, produced by a guy named Bruce Brown. And so he followed around these two surfers, uh, Mike Henson um, and, uh, Lord, the other guy, just Robert August. Uh, and so he follows them around, and they're in pursuit of the perfect wave. And I didn't know this, or, um, but the endless summer basically means that if you, if you had enough money and enough time, you could always be somewhere in the world where it's summer. And that was kind of the gist of the movie. If you haven't seen it, they're just traveling around the world nonstop with a photographer chasing the, the endless summer feeling, right? Uh, the perfect wave, the perfect vacation. So it could almost be called the endless vacation, Right, if you've got enough resources and enough time, you can get on a plane and, and where it, when it starts to get cold in one place in the planet, you can fly to where summer's just starting. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a cool movie if you haven't seen it. We borrowed the title for this series. Uh, and, and today, though, what I, I want to kind of talk about is, is that, that in itself, the, this endless pursuit right, of, of happiness or this endless pursuit of being on vacation or the perfect wave and And happiness is a funny thing, right? Happiness is a funny thing. Sometimes I feel like, is it it selfish to want to be happy? Is it selfish to want to pursue happiness? You know, what does the Bible say about happiness? You know, is is it, are are we supposed to be happy all the time as Christians? You know, I think there's there's a a camp of people that that believe, you know, as as Christians, we should always be happy. And, you know, and I I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. The Bible talks a lot about happiness, but it has a different word for it. And I think it, it's something that, that supersedes happiness. You know, happiness is a good thing. I think, we, I think it's, it's a good thing to want to be happy. But it's the pursuit of happiness that makes it seem like, you know, when we pursue it, it's almost like it just continues. It's like an optical illusion. <laughs> and one of the worst things to tell somebody who's not happy is, you should be happy. Come on, just, just muster it up, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just come on, you should be happy. What, what's wrong with you, you know? And, and it's almost like when you pursue happiness, it seems to be at, a, at an arm's length. But joy, the Bible talks about joy, and it supersedes happiness. I don't know if there's a person that doesn't want to be happy. Maybe there's some, you know, the, the melancholies out there that just want to be kind of just, just you know, or, or, did I say it wrong? Oh, okay. I've been told that I'm a little melancholy at times, and I am. Uh, but, but joy is, I think, a critical part of our life as believers. It should be. C.S. Lewis was leaving a church service, and he got this idea for a book that he called Screw Tape Letters. And it's, uh, it's the uh, conversation between two, two demons that were assigned to this convert that just became a Christian. And so it's the conversation between the screw tape was kind of the head demon and his protege. And they're trying to figure out ways to, to trip this Christian up. They don't, they, you know, he just became a Christian and they want him to, you know, they want to try to get him off the path. And in one of the conversations, screw tape and this other demon are talking and he, he's, he's talking to his protege and he says, talking about joy. He says, joy is the serious business of heaven. And I think he's right. That God wants us to be full of joy. Through through good seasons, through bad seasons, through happy times, through sad times. And and what I'm what the best that I can tell, joy will produce happiness. But if we pursue happiness, it's not guaranteed to produce, produce joy in our life. But when we go after joy, when we say, I know I want the joy of the Lord, I, I want to be not happy, but I want to have this, this joy the Bible talks about. It, it's a noun. It's, it's something that I believe God gives the believer. And I want to just look at a few things, three, three ways that happiness is different than joy, and then how, how do we choose joy in our life? Because they're different. Joy will produce happiness. Happiness isn't guaranteed to produce joy. And I think the first reason is because happiness is external. Happiness is external, if you're taking notes. It's always connected to, to something on the outside. It's always connected to, you know, the word happiness itself as happenstance. What, what happens to me? 
So it's what's going on in my life. If I get the job, I'm happy. If I don't get it, I'm sad. If it's sun, sunny outside and, I, and, I'm, and I'm planning to take the boat out, I'm happy. If there's a, you know, an EF2 tornado hitting down the beach, <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm sad. Like, you know, it, it's based on the weather. It's based on externals. Happiness is based on things that we cannot control. But joy, according to the Bible, is internal. It has nothing to do with what's happening to me, but it has everything to do with what, what, what's happening on the inside of me. And it doesn't make sense that the guy that wrote the most about joy in the New Testament was in prison most of the time that he wrote about joy. Paul, the Apostle Paul, I mean, this guy is writing about joy from a prison cell. In Philipp, the book of Philippians, he mentions joy, joy 15 times. But in 2 Corinthians, he, he talks about what he had been through. He'd been lashed five times, shipwrecked, beaten with rods. He spent a night and a day in the open sea. He, he'd been stoned. Not recreationally, but with rocks, okay? And he still stayed happy. He still had joy. <laughs> I thought y'all would like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did he do it? Second Corinthians chapter 4, he says, we don't lose heart. This is how. Because outwardly, we're wasting away. But on the inside, we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, externals, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, externals, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I think what Paul is trying to tell us here is that joy the inside dictates the outside. That when I'm pursuing joy, I'm not pursuing a set of circumstances that I think will make me happy. I'm not trying to bend the world into the way I think it should be or my world or my life. But it's an inside out thing. It's an inside job. Somebody say it's an inside job. It's an inside job. Second thing about happiness and joy, how they're different. Happiness is based on circumstances. Happiness is, is circumstantial. The Latin word for hap means luck. Luck. And so if I'm having good luck, if my circumstances are, are well, I'm happy. Right? If, if things are falling into place and, and my life seems to be working out the way I want it to be. But if my circumstance is not the way I want it to be, then I'm sad. But joy, I want to read the verse first before I give it to you. Again, this is Paul. Wrote more about joy than anybody that I can find in the Bible. And this is how he said he stayed, he found this joy. I'm glad in God. I'm happy in God. Far happier than you would ever guess. Happy that you're again showing me so much concern. Not that you ever quit praying and thinking about me. You just had no chance to show it. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything at all. Listen to this, I don't, I don't need anything. I've learned by now to be content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I've found the recipe for being happy. That's good. Whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty, this is it. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Happiness is based on circumstance. Joy is based on centering our life around someone that's bigger than us. And for Paul, it was Jesus. For Paul, it was Jesus. He was basically saying, my life could fall apart on the outside. I could have a lot of money, no money. A lot of friends, no friends. I'm in prison. And he's, he's showing us something that's like, I mean, psychologists, I think, have confirmed this, that it's what's going on on the inside that really dictates how we're doing. And he's, and he's saying, I've tapped into this joy that's from another world. It has nothing to do with the circumstances I'm in. And it's all based on what's going on on the inside because I've centered my life around something greater than what happens to me. Because I know no matter, I mean, Paul was a guy that you, he just couldn't lose. 
He would write things like, no matter where I find myself, he says, I'd rather be absent from the body so that I can be in the presence of God. There was nothing you could do to kind of, I mean, he, he was just, because I think he was so centered, he centered his life around one thing, and it was pleasing God, making him happy. And I think that was what brought this deep level of joy into his life. Happiness, last one, happens by chance. It's just luck. If, if things go my way, if I roll the dice and I win, I'm happy. It's just up and down, up and down, up and down. And you know, if, if, if our happiness is connected to something that can change, it, we're going to kind of be like the weather. We're going to be happy one day and we're going to be sad the next. And then we're going to be happy one day and we're going to be sad the next. But, but joy happens by choice. Joy happens by choice. And so I've, I've talked about joy before. I, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, um, honestly, I don't feel like I quite completely understand it. And so getting ready for this, this message, I, I wanted to just really try to get as, as much, like, what were the people doing in the Bible when God talked about them having joy? What were they doing? What were the decisions they were making? And so I looked up the word joy every time it was mentioned, 165 times in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we're going to read all of them. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I hope you don't have any lunch plans. No, I'm kidding. No, I did the hard work for you. I, I feel like I boiled it down and found it. There was four main categories. There was four main things that were happening in the people's lives in the, in the Bible, Old Testament and New, where they experienced the joy of God. Four main things. I'm going to listen to you in ascending order. And the verse that God really put in my heart was Nehemiah 8, verse 10. And, and Nehemiah 8, verse 10 is, a, is an awesome verse for many reasons. But it talks about, I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's there in your handout. It says, enjoy the good food. Sweet drinks, send some to those who have nothing prepared. This is the day, this is a, a day is holy to our God. Don't grieve, saying stop crying, stop being sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. How many could use some strength this morning? Three of you. All right, come on, somebody. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I needed this. This helped me. Just getting ready for this helped me, and I hope it, I hope it helps you. And so I, all 165 fit into four categories. I'm going to give them to you in ascending order. The last one was the most mentioned. And so the first one, I'm going to read the verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name, and forget not all his benefits. Looking through the verses where people were experiencing joy, one of the key things they were doing is they were remembering the goodness of God in their life. I choose joy when I wake up and I choose to remember in my history the goodness of God in my life. And that's something that nobody can pick for you. That's something that every morning when you get up and you put your pants on and you're getting ready and you're brushing your teeth, whatever it is that you do in your morning routine, that is something that you have, only you have the ability to do, is to wake up and say, you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. I, I will rejoice and be glad in it. And this is why, because I'm going to look back at my history and, and a lot of what I think brought joy to the, to the people of the Bible and those that are walking with God now is they, is they remember the right things. The enemy has a tendency. It says he's the father of lies. He's the accuser of the brethren. And he likes to bring up stuff in your past and help you remember where you failed and help you remember who walked out on you and help you remember the business partner that just sued you and help you remember the person who said they were gonna be there and now they can't and now they're not there and now you, you see them in Walmart and you turn around and go back to your car, right? Like, like that's how the enemy works. He wants to bring up your hurts and your hangups and things that went wrong in your life and this is what he wants you to do. He wants you to focus on that. But those that have joy, it's not that they haven't been through any pain. They just don't ruminate on it all the time. That's, I mean, ruminating is this, this, this term. Apparently, it's, a, it's 
where we just take the bad of our life, the bad things, and, and we just chew on it. And we play it like a, like a vinyl record over and over and over and over in our minds. And we relive it and we talk about it and we get a shirt and we make a, like, a, it's like, it's all we, we we're, it becomes our identity what happened to us. But those that have joy say, you know what, I'm, I'm more than what happened to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose this day to remember the goodness of God in my life. I'm going to choose this day to remember, come on, thank you. You can clap. <laughs> I'm going to remember the people that stayed. I'm going to remember the people that prayed for me, not talked about me. I'm, I'm going to remember the good. I'm going to remember the good. That's also in Nehemiah. I'm going to remember the good. And it's so easy to, I mean, because as soon as you wake up, you've probably got 10 things on your phone that you could ruminate on and worry yourself into a, into a hole. There's a coup in Russia. Great. You know, like, like I mean, like, uh, or, you know, what, there's, there's some, every morning you wake up, it's breaking news. It's like, here's something to worry about all day. Thank you, Fox News and CNN. I appreciate you so, so much. But instead, instead, I'm going to talk about and think about, I'm going to remember the good. Philippians 4, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, right, Pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about these things. Remember the good. My joy is connected to right remembering. Your joy is connected to right remembering. If you want to get yourself into a depression, ruminate on the bad things that has happened to you. Ruminate on the mistakes. Ruminate on the failures. That word ruminate, the, the illustration is a cow that's eaten grass and it just chews on it and then it spits it out and then it eats it again. I want to meditate on the goodness of God. I want to meditate on the good things. I, I want to I remember the right things. I want to remember the good things. The second thing, so in, the, in Nehemiah, our, our verse this morning, where he's talking about the joy of the Lord is your strength. I always connected a lot of times joy with like maybe like something that happened while you're at church, right? That like, you know, or if, you, if you or anybody ever gone to a Pentecostal church or been raised in a Pentecostal church for y'all, okay? He's like, the, the, the joy of the Lord came on them and they got happy. And I think that happens. One time I was in a meeting with a guy, his name was Tommy Bates. Somebody, is, <laughs> my friend Steve was in the room. And he's this uh, preacher, awesome preacher. He could sing, and, and um, he was up playing the piano. And <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even want to tell this story. <laughs> but uh, Anyways, it was a camp meeting. So it was revival services. It was, I mean, the, there was a lot of joy in the room. And I'm a, pretty, I'm a pretty quiet, conservative guy most of the time. And, and, uh, and, and I, you know, I like to people watch sometimes. And so, I, you know, I'm clapping, I'm, I'm worshiping. And he just stopped everything he was doing. And he got up and I'm, I, was wearing a, I was wearing a suit and tie at the time. I was in intern, an intern program. I was working at the church. So we had to wear suits and ties. And he, he looked down and he pointed at the front pew. And he said, hey, little guy in the brown suit. <laughs> and I like... I was like, no way, it's not going to be. You know, I looked over and, and everybody, it was like the Red Sea part and everybody just, <laughs> he's like, I'm old and my legs don't work the way they used to. Can you run across the front of this church for me a few times and help people? <laughs> so you know what I did? I ran, baby, <laughs> as hard as I could run. You can't even see me on the video. I got the tape. You just see this hair flying through the wind. <laughs> Going, going across the front of the altar. I hit, I hit the side of the wall, turned around, and ran back to the other side. It was a good day, you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> first time I'd ever got, you know, ran in church. I'd seen other people do it. And um, I was like the road runner. You know when he'd start running and you can't even see his legs? <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying there. Uh, oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but the joy of the Lord can come upon you in, in a room like this, in a church service while you're worshiping. But in our verse in Nehemiah, they weren't in a church, and they weren't in a camp meeting. And they didn't have a B5 Hammond up there with the organ going and, and an evangelist preaching to them. They were eating. 
Let me read it to you again. They were having a feast. Go home. Have a feast. Share your food and wine with those who don't have enough. Today is holy to our God, so don't be sad. The joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. And so when I was looking up that word joy, it was funny to me that it was normally mentioned during the feast days. So in the Old Testament, they had these feast days. Basically, it was a reason to come together, eat good food, drink wine, and celebrate the goodness of God. And it said it was in those meals and in those feasts, and in the, you got the Passover, and you've got the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Trumpets. And if you go back and look through all those things, they were remembering, they were doing two things. They were remembering the faithfulness of God, and then they were celebrating the goodness of God what he had done in their life that season, that year, that month. And so I think that the, the second thing here, how do, I, how do I walk in joy? Well, I remember the goodness of God, but I choose joy when I celebrate the blessings of God. That's what those feast days were for. That's what Nehemiah is doing in his verse. They're not having a church service. They're, they're not, they, they had just got through rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem and Ezra, who was a prophet, got out, and he started reading the Bible, and, and the people repented, and it says that, that at, at some point, Nehemiah said, all right, it's, you've cried enough, let's get a good, let's set the table, let's get together, let's have a good meal, and let's celebrate the blessings of God in our life. I think there's a whole lot more happening around the table when we eat good food with good friends and family. I think there's a whole lot more happening in our life when we come together. And I know sometimes it's all centered around different holidays, but I think about the 4th of July. And I think about coming together and, and what do we do? Well, we're thinking, we're, we're remembering the faithfulness of people that have gone before us, but we're celebrating the goodness of God. Aren't you glad you live in this country? Aren't you glad you're surrounded by the people you're, you're surrounded by? And, and so it's not always a, a super spiritual thing that happens on Sundays when it comes to joy. Sometimes it's very practical. It's in breaking bread. It's in sharing good, a good meal with your family and your friends and, and bringing up not only what God has done in the past, but what he's doing in your life right now. You get more of what you celebrate in your life. I'm starting to realize that. You get more of what you celebrate. And God has blessed all of us. I mean, you're here this morning. I'm sure you drove your car and probably came from your house or your hotel and and, and you woke up on your own means. Nobody had to wake you up and you're breathing on your own this morning. Looks like everybody is. Like like, like, like the the more that we begin to celebrate the the goodness and the blessings in our life, it's like the the more we appreciate, what we appreciate appreciates begins to grow and we begin to see more of it. And so as I celebrate the blessings of God, what I think happens is we start to see God's blessing grow in our life. And it goes the other way. When I focus on problems and I focus on what's wrong or I focus on the negative, it can turn a a little molehill into a mountain. If faith can move mountains, doubt can create them and worry, and fear. And so one of the things that was connected to joy over and over and over, I kept finding, is they were celebrating together, they were eating good food, and they were were talking about the blessings of God. Did they have problems? Absolutely. Were there people sick? I'm sure. Were there people in pain at the table? Probably. Everybody, I'm sure, wasn't happy, but they had joy. (laughs) There's a difference celebrating the blessings of God. And so what are you celebrating in your life right now? What are you looking forward to in your life right now? Because I think so much of joy is our focus, is our focus. What are you celebrating? The third thing, joy. Joy comes when I remember the goodness of God. I celebrate the blessings of God. And then there was this pattern that happened over and over and over, mostly in the, in the book of Psalms, 
where the psalmist would start out and he's just broken. He's crying. You know, it's like a, a country song. His dog left him. His wife left him. He lost his house. He lost his business, right? You know, it's like a, it was like the beginning of a sad country song. And then something would shift. And oftentimes, it was there was something in his life, the writer or the person that God was asking him to do or asking them to do, and when they would obey that word or that whisper from God, it was like all of a sudden this joy would come rushing into their life. I wanted you to see it here in Isaiah. Hear me, you know what is right. You people, you've taken my instruction to heart. Don't fear anything that can happen on the outside. Don't be terrified. Verse 11. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord will return, and they're going to come with singing. Everlasting joy will be upon their head. They're going to obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Nehemiah 8, the joy of the Lord is their strength. They had just got through reading the Bible. The prophet Ezra had stood up, and the Bible spoke to them, and they, and they seen that their life spiritually was not what God had wanted for them. And when they had made that decision to obey the word that they had just heard, all of a sudden now this joy began to, began to flow into their life. And I think a lot of times that joy is found when we are as close to the purpose and presence of God as we can get. And I think that only comes through obeying his voice and walking in obedience, and walking in his word. The more of God's word that I'm living, the more of the joy of God I'm going to have in my life. And we see this over and over and over. The more I run from God's, God's word, and the more I run from God's whisper, the more I'm going to be miserable. Look at, look at Jonah, y'all. I mean, like, it's a kind of a perfect example. A word came into Jonah's life. He said, hey, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh. He went the other way, <laughs> Tarsus, the, father he, the farther he got away from the whisper of God and the word of God, the more his life began to get just kind of depressing. And even the people around him started feeling this weightiness. There's joy. There's joy on the other side of obedience. Because a lot of times what God asks you to do may not be the thing that brings you happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is temporary. Happiness is, 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 it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. And I may have to make some tough decisions to obey God and his word, but I'm, I'm obeying knowing that on the other side of this, Hebrews is at 10, Jesus is on the cross. And he says, for the joy that was set before him, he knew on the other side of his obedience, even though nobody wanted to go to the cross, nobody wants to go through pain, nobody wants to go through loss, but what I'm finding in life is that joy is not a feeling, it's a focus. And if I can go through the situation, I know that on the other side of me staying faithful and staying true to God's word and staying steady and saying, I know, you know, I know everybody else is, is, is walking away, but I'm going to stay true to what God's called me to do. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay steadfast. I'm going to keep reading this word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going to church, even though the preacher's a little weird. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep getting, I'm going to keep worshiping that on the other side of my obedience when I Listen to the word. I obey the word. There's joy that comes into my life. And that's what we really want. Because happiness is like the weather. It changes. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. But joy is something that we can tap into no matter what's going on in our life. And this is the last one in this was by far the most, of 165 mentions, this one was probably 80 or 90. That joy, every time that this word joy was used, what were they doing? Mostly in the book of Psalms. But have you ever noticed how hard it is sometimes to get to church? Anybody? You ever noticed how hard it is when you say, okay, I'm gonna put on some worship music and I'm just gonna sit for a little bit. The phone rings, the neighbor shows up, the dog runs away. Anybody, is, is that only me? Okay, 
I have a dog that's just a villain. He just like he just he just run, runs away. He's smart though, so he comes back. But it's like you know, I just just as soon as I decide, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take some time to to just worship God right now. Everything starts going away because there's this there's this pattern over and over and over and over that when we when we choose to worship God. It's just inviting his joy into our life. And it's not just worshiping God on the mountain. It's worshiping God in the valley. (laughs) It's worshiping God when you're not real happy. It's worshiping God when you don't feel good and you don't feel like it. That's why, like, you would see it over and over. David, David would command his soul to worship God. He would tell his soul to worship God. Like, it's like he was telling, he's like, I'm not going to let my body, I'm not going to let how I'm feeling dictate my faith. That, that if I could define joy, it, it's, it's the decision, the premeditated decision to worship God in every circumstance. And if, if we can find that place, if we can, if we can make that a pattern not, and a habit in our life, that when we don't feel good and we're not happy and things aren't going well, we can choose to worship God, something powerful begins to happen on the inside of us. So what I want you to do, I just want you to bow your heads and I wanna, I wanna pray for joy this morning for somebody here. Joy. Because God, I want you to, I want you to have joy. And you you may have to walk through seasons that aren't very happy. But we have this promise that we can be anchored in the joy of the Lord. That joy is not a feeling. I don't have to feel it. It's a focus. It's when I choose to focus on the goodness and the beauty of God, no matter what situation I'm in. I'm not going to look at my circumstances. I'm going to look at him. It's focus. It's a focus. It's a focus. And so, Lord, in this moment, we thank you. Just, in, just with your head bowed and eye closed, I want you just to look back and think about just the blessings of God in your life over the last several years. Just think about the goodness. Think about the good things. Think about how faithful he's been. Think about how he's wooed you back in when there's times you wanted to stray. Think about when you were ready to give up and that friend just called you and showed up. Think about those times when you were maybe walking by yourself and and just something happened and it was God's way of just telling you he was there and he was with you. Joy. Think about the people who prayed for you. Think about the ones who have stuck with you. Then I want you to think about the future. What good thing are you believing God to do for you this week? What good thing are you believing God to do for you this month or this year? What are you looking forward to? And if you don't have anything, you don't have a way to answer that, I want you just to think about where you're heading this morning as a Christian. A place with no sorrow and no pain. A place of unity where you'll reunite with family and friends, where you'll see those that have gone on before you, where the streets are paved with gold and the gates are made out of a solid pearl, where there's no sun there because it says Jesus will be the light of that city, and it says every tear will be dried up. Joy. God, we thank you for joy today. We thank you for expectation, knowing that something good is coming. No matter how hard it's been to this point, I want you to hear that something good is coming. 
me. Just thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen.